puppy. The class is about to start. I mean, maybe you'll try not to be late, Mr. Murphy. The crowd burst laughing from the teenager's daring joke, while a teacher quietly walked by. Puppy's brazen antics didn't surprise him anymore, but he didn't lose hope that the boy would change for the better. Mr. Murphy worked in one of the worst schools in the town, despite being invited to teach at the university. He decided to choose this school with difficult teenagers. It was quite hard for them to study. All his students were from dysfunctional families and sometimes attended the school hungry, beaten or dirty. The teacher felt sorry for his students. He tried to give them lunch money, help to clean their clothes and beg them not to get into any fights. Once, one of his students, Matouche, walked all the way to school under the pouring rain, only in a t-shirt. The boy said that the only jacket he had was torn and he had no other clothes. Mr. Murphy took pity on him. He took the boy, went to the store and the kind teacher bought his student a new jacket. Mr. Murphy's colleagues often laughed at the compassionate teacher saying that these ungrateful teenagers would never appreciate his care. But the guy didn't really listen to anyone and just continued doing good deeds. Kids, does anybody know where Arash is? No one responded. It was not common among these teenagers to tell the truth. So as the classes were finished, the teacher went to figure out the reason why his student was missing the classes. Arash's family lived in a bunkhouse. Loud music and swearing were coming from the window. The boy's drunken father opened the door. Good afternoon, I'm Arash's teacher. Salute, what do you want? I wanted to ask why did your son, this brat's right there. The man gestured towards the room and returned back to the kitchen to sit with his friends. Mr. Murphy opened up the door and froze, terrified. Arash laid in his dirty linens all beaten up. The boy said that he was so hungry, he stole a piece of his father's sausage from the table. The man noticed it and decided to educate his son with his fists. The teacher could not remain indifferent with such cruelty. He ran into the kitchen to talk with a careless parent, the disgruntled drunkard got into a fist fight with the protector and a fight ensued. The opponent was much larger, but the teacher managed to defeat him. The boy's father began to apologize and swear that he would make things right from now on. The next day Mr. Murphy was walking to school in the greatest mood, when suddenly he saw his student Bobrak running out of the pharmacy. A saleswoman was chasing after him. Right at this moment, a petrol car drove from around the corner. The cops instantly realized that the boy committed a crime, blocked the thief's path and quickly grabbed him and wanted to take him to the police station. But Mr. Murphy came to the rescue. He started persuading the officers that they had to let the teen go, that he vouches for his student and promises to win him from stealing. The cops were too lazy to bother with the little thief. So they gladly handed Babrak into his hands. On the way to the class, Babrak told his teacher that his mother was very sick. They had no money to buy any medicine because his family consisted of refugees from Afghanistan, so the boy decided to steal it for her. For the whole day, Mr. Murphy was thinking about Babrak's family and about his sick mother. And as the classes were finished, he called the boy and they went to the pharmacy together. He bought the expensive medicine for Babrak's mother, spending his last money. I hope your mom will get better soon. The boy warmly thanked his teacher and ran home. Mr. Murphy cared about each of his students, especially about Papi. The boy constantly rambled behind the school with local gangsters. They taught the teenager how to swear, how to fight and steal. One of the thugs showed Puppik how to unnoticeably 
pull a wallet out of someone's pocket, and the other explained how to steal food. One day, the teacher ran out of excuses and decided to run these guys off, but the most insolent one took out a knife, and Mr. Murphy had to stand down, as he realized he could not cope with them alone. This time, he stayed at the school for the whole night and kept thinking and thinking of the way he could prevent these freaks from gathering on the school's ground. In the morning, he informed his students that they would be equipping the sports ground together. But the kids refused to take part in this. They felt too lazy. Mr. Murphy freaked out and decided to do everything on his own. His students could see him cleaning the trash from out the window. Mr. Murphy helped my family. He bought my mom the medicine she needed. He also helped you, Arash, your father does not beat you anymore. And you too, Matush. You are wearing this school jacket thanks to our teacher. The whole class supported Babrak, and they went to help Mr. Murphy. But Papik hated this idea. He hated his teacher and all the stupid lectures and preachings. The guys worked together and quickly managed to get rid of the trash and paint the fence. The teacher wielded various fitness equipment using the old scrap metal. They planted some trees and flowers around the perimeter of the playground, made various stone walkways and put benches. When everything was ready, the guys could not believe their eyes. Could it really be their schoolyard? Now they were spending all of their free time here together with Mr. Murphy. As to the bandits, they were quite unhappy that their favorite spot was taken and they decided to destroy the sports ground. That evening, Mr. Murphy stayed late at school. It was already dark outside and he wanted to go home, when suddenly he heard a strange noise. He ran closer to the window and saw these idiots destroying the equipment, damaging the flower beds and setting the trash cans on fire. The teacher called the police. When the police officers arrived, Mr. Murphy also participated in the detention. The bandits tried to resist, but still lost the fight. Reporters arrived at the scene and the whole city learned about the new side and the brave teacher. I only wanted to make this world a little bit better. The mayor of the city saw the coverage of the story about the teacher. Mr. Murphy was invited to the mayor's office. He became the teacher of the year. The man received an award from the mayor and a bunch of new laptops were presented to his class. We must take revenge on him! Difficult teenagers were occupied with their new hobbies. They started studying computer science and creating their own games. Meanwhile, Papik sat at the last desk and looked at his former friends and the teacher with hatred. Everyone went to the sports ground after lessons. The teacher showed them the workout tricks and students tried to repeat after him. The bandits found a cell phone and texted Papik with a detailed plan of revenge on the teacher. Papik received the SMS and happily agreed to help with their plan. On the next day, students together with Mr. Murphy found out that the new laptops were missing. The cops arrived at the crime scene and started searching for the evidence. They looked at the surveillance camera footage. The thief's hat was covered with a hood and his face was not visible. It was seen how he carried out the laptops and wore very distinctive clothes. At that time, Papik arrived at school and the cops recognized the thief's jacket. They grabbed the guy and brought him to the police car. Papik was really scared. He didn't want to end up in jail. Please, Mr. Murphy, help me! The teacher took pity on his student, ran towards the policeman and confessed that he was the one who stole the laptops. Though the cops were surprised, they wanted to close the case quickly, so they released the boy and arrested the teacher instead of him. 
That was how Mr. Murphy ended up in jail. Well, well, look who is here. The teacher decided not to respond to his enemies, though they constantly pursued him and tried to provoke a conflict. He always managed to get away in his cell. Murphy was thinking about his actions. He didn't regret that he took public's blame because he really wanted the guy to become a better person. One day, the prisoners were taken to the shower. When the teacher soaped his head, his enemies asked everyone to leave the room. The ones who were there went out with great pleasure because they liked the local disputes. The bandits closed the door, took out their shanks and moved towards their victim. Heartbreaking screams resounded from the shower room. Everyone was worried about their teacher. Puppy became an outcast. The kids blamed him for everything. It was because of him Mr. Murphy ended up in jail. And now nobody wanted to teach them. The prisoners kicked down the shower door. The teacher tried to justify himself. These gangsters were afraid of him. The guy became a sort of authority. The cops ran inside and began to interrogate the prisoners. They wanted to know what kind of a person could do that, but everyone was silent. Nobody wanted to rat on the teacher. The prison doctor noticed that one of the bandits was still breathing. From then on, prisoners were coming to the teacher's cell. They tried to emulate him. They wanted to become as cool and as cold-blooded. Folks, just do what's right. He realized that he was capable of helping a lot of people there. So he began to organize meetings, try to explain that living honestly is way better than living like outlaws. Groups of people started listening to him. They began to improve the walking yard together, watch different documentaries, flush the toilet and even stop chomping their food in the canteen. Murphy decided to try and educate the prisoners. There was hardly anyone who could write or read. So the teacher appointed a meeting with the prison governor, Ginger. The guard escorted the guest to the second floor, where the office was located. I'm all yours, Mr. Murphy. I want to organize an evening school for the prisoners. Hmm, what do I make of it? They'll get much more educated. I will learn to behave themselves. That is a decent idea. And for that, you will reduce my sentence. Ginger ordered his guards to hand the keys from an old library over to the teacher. That library clearly needed some maintenance, but the prisoners gladly got down to business. They removed the spider web, repaired the old tables and chairs, painted the walls and glued the old books. A whole bunch of people visited the first lesson, as everyone wanted to become educated. Masha and the bear. The prisoners gave up fighting and messing around. They started behaving politely, greeted and complimented each other. Sir, you look absolutely delightful today. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to see you. Gambrinus truly hated such kind of behavior among the convicts. He tried to mess with the righteous man, but the teacher's henchmen protected him, and so the Minecrafters had to retreat. Finally, some old man decided to become the new teacher for these difficult teenagers. The school principal hastily escorted the brave volunteer to his new class and breathed a sigh of relief. Greetings, everyone. Name's Shoigu. I'm a former military. At first, the kids thought that their new teacher was just a loser. No one paid any attention to him, and they just continued to fool around. But Shoigu quickly dealt with the most arrogant hooligans, and everyone realized that it was better not to mess with their new mentor. He constantly talked about the Vietnam War during his classes, describing how his squad got lost in the jungle, his comrades died in the traps or of disease or were killed by guerrilla's arrows. 
He was the only survivor. The man ran through the heavy jungle until he fell into a pit with poisonous spikes. How did you survive? I cut off my own leg with this knife. The schoolers were quite annoyed by the tiresome old man, so they started thinking how to get their beloved Mr. Murphy back. Papik suggested organizing a jailbreak as he wanted to infiltrate the prison. For that, he needed some guns and a hacksaw. Everyone supported the idea. Alina overheard their conversation. She wanted to help them too. Stay out of man's business. I know where to get the guns. She got their attention. Alina told them that her father was a former bounty killer and that they had a whole weapon arsenal in their basement. The kids went to her house. Alina's father wasn't home. So the guys quietly went down to the basement and couldn't believe their eyes. The walls were hung with weapons and ammunition. Papi chose a pocket pistol as it could be easily hidden. They also borrowed her father Hakso and headed to school. During the class, Shoigu lectured about the war again. Papik raised his hand. What is it, young man? Why don't you take us on a prison tour? Hotter nonsense! Sir, but children should know that prisons are bad. Then they would strive to become military men just like you and not some crooks. Other kids supported Papik's suggestion, so Shoigu had to accept it too. It was already on the next day that they were heading towards the prison on a school bus. The prison governor Ginger met them on site. They escorted the kids through the patrol duty office, showed them the crossing point, the weapons locker, the visiting room, took them out to the walking yard, and then went down to the punishment cell to show how the punished detainees were held. When they were visiting the sports hall, Papik hid behind the locker, changed his clothes, took everything he needed and blended in. Nobody noticed that he went missing. When the excursion was over, the kids boarded the bus and put an inflatable doll dressed like Papik instead of him. The guard counted them all, the kids were all there, and the bus departed. Meanwhile, Papik began to search for the teacher. He was so worried that prison guards would recognize him, so he had to hide from them, move in short bursts from one corner to another. One of the prisoners called him, and Papik took off running. He ended up in the canteen and sat down at the first vacant table. There was a lot of good food there. The boy cheered up. Could this delicious food be cooked for the prisoners? Hey, who are you? I'm the new guy. This table is set only for me. Chich and Moses finished fishing, said goodbyes, and both went home. Chich gave the catch to his wife, and the woman went to cook dinner, while the ex-killer went down to the basement to put Kordash in its place. He noticed that one of the guns was missing. Good thing he attached the GPS trackers to all of his guns. He quickly identified the location of his weapon. It was in the Gulag prison. Where is Alina? She went on a prison tour. Papik was dragged to the utility block. The bandits usually dealt with their victims there. Gambrinus ordered to search the guy. They shook out his cell phone, a hacksaw and the gun. The leader picked the gun up and saw the engraving saying Cheech. But this is the greatest killer in Roblox. Papik didn't know what to say. Bro, I'm sorry about that. Gambrinus offered Papik to become his right hand. There was nothing he could do, so he had to agree. Moses quickly came to help his friend. Cheech tried to call his daughter, but the phone was unavailable. Moses offered to settle it all on the spot, so they took everything they needed, jumped into the car and went to the prison in search of Alina. 
two Minecrafters arrived at the Murphy's library. He got ready to fight back, but the Minecrafters informed him that they also wanted to study. The teacher agreed happily. They sat in the corner, behind the closet, so that Gambrinus wouldn't learn that they began to study. Black truck drove straight down the highway towards the prison. Captives were inside of it. Alina was shaking in fear. All the recent events were flashing before her eyes. They were calmly driving to her house, when the bandits noticed their bus from afar. When they drove closer, the cell tower blew up, and this huge construction collapsed right on the road. The driver didn't have any time to react. The cars collided, and the bus caught on fire. The gangsters approached the burning bus and dragged several people out of it. And that was how the guys ended up in captivity. Gambrinus was boasting to Puppet that he had a lot of Robux on the outside. What is this map? It shows where my stash is. Some good news resounded from the TV. A children's social assistant fund raised a whole lot of Robux for treatment. They barely fit it into the train that was supposed to leave for Africa at dawn. Mole called Gambrinus. Inform your crew, you'll have to rob this train. Sure, boss. The train was quietly making its way towards Africa. These shameless gangsters set up a trap somewhere in the forest. So the train had to stop to avoid the accident. Then the criminals attacked instantly and the train was seized. They threw the driver into a ravine, cleared the way and hijacked the train to an abandoned railway. When they reached the dead end, the construction equipment had been already waiting for them. They used the backhoe to load the Robux into a dump truck. Gambrinus himself got behind the wheel. He ordered his gang to wait for him in this secret place, while he took all the money and disappeared in an unknown direction. He drove so far away, even he couldn't say where he was exactly. There he find a suitable cave, parked the car and lay the dynamite near the exit. After the explosion, the place was clogged with rocks. Gambrinus took out a piece of paper and a pencil and started drawing a map using the star's position. When the task was completed, he used the compass to find his crew, called Mo and informed him that he has done everything. This guy's as Russians and lay low. Gambrinus gang did as they were told. Breaking news about the train robbery was shown on the TV. No evidence has been found yet. The train driver said that he couldn't see the attacker's faces. Gambrinus was satisfied. It all went so smooth. He gave Richie a bunch of Robux to buy some Bloxy Cola and chips for the guys. Richie went to the nearest gas station, took everything he needed and wanted to pay at the register. The cashier decided to check the banknotes and it was seen in an ultraviolet light that the money was stolen. He secretly pushed the emergency button and the police were notified. What's taking so long? The register is broken. Richie smelled the rat and rushed to the exit, but the policeman got there right on time. The gangster was arrested. Where did you take this Robux, huh? Richie came clean and the SWAT unit raided the bandit's hideout. Gambrinus didn't confess where he hid the Robux and his whole squad got a life sentence. It was so obvious that Maul would want to obtain that money. He contacted Gambrinus and promised to get him out of the prison. And well, you know the rest. Papik was still recovering from the terrible incident when they brought the traitors to the warehouse. They visited the teacher. Cheesh, kill the traitors. Papik took out a gun, but simply couldn't pull the trigger. Gambrinus felt nervous, and Papik noticed it, so he had to fire. Chichen Moses set up not very far from the prison. 
a message saying that someone fired the gun popped up on the laptop. Cheech launched a drone with a thermal imager, flew closer to the prison, and they saw some silhouettes on the screen. Is this Selena? Gambrinus was satisfied, and Papik tried to hide his fear. The boss ordered him to deal with the teacher too. Cheech and Moses saw how the silhouette with the gun headed to a neighboring facility. The teacher was left speechless when he saw Papik. The kid told him all the truth. Now my task is to kill you. The teacher grabbed the gun and they went together to deal with Gambrinus. What's going on there? Mr. Murphy gave the gun back to Gambrinus. Get off my student! What did you say? Gambrinus wanted to kill them both, but Cheech activated the gun's self-destruction. All the gangsters were blown to pieces. The tower guards heard the explosion, but didn't have enough time to raise the alarm. Cheech and Moses started shooting at them with sedative darts. When everything was clean, Cheech flew closer to the warehouse on his paraglider and sneaked inside of it. But instead of his daughter, he found her classmate, Papik. Where is my daughter? At that exact moment, a black truck drove up to the prison. The gangsters got the captives out of the car and demanded to release Gambrinus. The prison governor tried to contact special forces, but the comms were all locked out, so he had to enter into discussion with the bandits. Chigger put a gun to Alina, she will die. Moses informed Chich that his daughter was in the enemy's hands and that he couldn't take aim properly because of the fans. Papik told them that these thugs came for Gambrinus and that they needed the stolen Robux, which he had hidden. Cheech instantly realized what they needed to do. He took out his disguise kit, put on the adaptive plasma on the teacher's head, found Gambrinus' characteristics in the database and adapted the plasma. Papik helped Cheech. He chose the name tag with Gambrinus' name and stuck it to the teacher's chest. Ginger knocked on the door. Gambrinus, come out! Your man came after you! The teacher came round. Cheech was holding a mirror in front of him and explained that Papik and him had to infiltrate the gang to rescue the hostages. Here is a map, we'll keep an eye on you. The teacher went to the gangsters and suggested releasing the hostages, but Chigger was against it. Cops could as well arrange a chase. And who is this kid? He is my personal masseur. The gangsters returned to their base. Come out one by one. They lined the captives up. Gambrinus, follow me. Chigur escorted the teacher to his boss's office, and they all started discussing the plan. You have to go and collect the Robux immediately. I'm on it, boss. Chigur will keep an eye on you. Don't even think of running away. They locked the teacher into the bomb vest. In case you try to escape, I'll activate the bomb. One of the gangsters came into the office and asked the boss what to do with the captives. Get rid of them! The teacher suggested taking them with him to collect the Robux. He might need them to dig up the stash. Maul had the backache again. He started yelling and kicking everyone out of his office and then started crying in pain. While the gangsters were getting ready for the mission, Papik and Mr. Murphy found a way to disarm the explosive. Mr. Mole, my masseur could fix and strengthen your back. Papik began to massage his tormenting back, and the boss felt better. All right, he can stay. Everything was ready, and the crew hit the open road. Good thing that the teacher studied the map beforehand. Now they knew where they needed to go, and he calmly pointed the way. It was a very long ride. They drove past different cities and small villages, past the endless fields and the mountains, up until they reached the deep forest. 
The road was littered with trees, so they had to go buy food. It was getting dark, and they decided to set up base camp. They put all the captives in one tent and placed a guardsman in front of it. Chigger constantly asked the teacher how far they still needed to go. The teacher showed him a point on the map and said that they would be in place by tomorrow. The gangsters sat down by the warm fire to fry sausages. Mo's voice resounded from the radio. What is the situation? All is well, boss. We're nearly there. Everyone was so tired after this long journey, and they all fell asleep. Promptly, right after having their dinner, there was nothing but silence in the camp, and only the captives didn't sleep. As soon as they heard the guardsmen snoring, Shoigu stamped with his crutch. A knife appeared. The old man cut the rope on his hands and then freed the others. He then carefully cut through the tent so that others could get out and disappear into the forest. They ran for the hills, as far away from these gangsters as possible. After crossing the stream, they stopped to have a little rest. I shall teach you how to survive in the forest. The Vietnam War veteran showed the teenagers how they could camouflage themselves according to the surroundings to be invisible for their enemies. They made bows and arrows, sharpened their spears, found the suitable locks and built the Vietnam traps in different spots of the forest. They left some traces by each of the traps and laid in wait. The guardsman was the first one who woke up. He stood by the tent to check on the captives, but no one was inside. The men raised the alarm. Chigger was so angry he killed the useless worker and other gangsters had to go to the forest in search of the fugitives. They found the footprints leading in different directions among some trees and decided to split up. Babra ran out from behind the trees and began to tease the bandits. The angered men rushed after him but immediately fell into a trap. Chigger heard their plantative cry and ran towards that direction and also fell into a punch pit. The gangsters were terrified. They walked looking over their shoulders. One of them accidentally touched the stretched rope and a giant spike lock hit the target. The teacher was carefully walking along the path when suddenly arrows flew at him from all directions. He ran back to the camp but got right into a trap. Help me! The partisans jumped out of the bushes and wanted to finish him. But suddenly, the teacher took off the gambrinous mask. Please don, it's me, Mr. Murphy. The guys were so happy, they took their beloved teacher down from the tree and asked him how he got there. Suddenly, a shot resounded and the poor Mateusz collapsed to the ground. It was the wounded Chigger. The teacher reacted and instantly covered Alina, but the second bullet hit him. Shaigu activated his last trap and spikes nailed Chigger down to the ground. Over, over. Babra grabbed the walkie-talkie and simulated Chigger's voice to say that everything was all right. The teacher was still alive, so the guys dragged him into the camp. Shaigu heated his knife and cauterized the wound to stop the bleeding. The poor teacher was in great pain, but he courageously offered to complete their mission. They took everything they needed and moved on. Hey, shorty, give me a massage. Papik started massaging the man's aching back thoroughly. Maul relaxed and dozed off. The kid decided to take the opportunity. He quietly climbed off the boss back and grabbed the remote. Meanwhile, the guys made their way to the cave. Collectively, they managed to clear the blockage and found the very same truck with Robux. We have to deliver this money to Africa. Jigger, what have you got there? The teacher grabbed the walkie-talkie and told Mole that he wouldn't receive this money. Mole realized that they outsmarted him. 
He grabbed the remote control and threatened to blow the teacher up. I'm ready to die for the truth. Everyone hid in shelters. Mole tried to push the buttons furiously, but nothing really happened. He then threw the remote on the floor and saw that there was water inside. The man remembered that only the masseur was in his office. He ran out into the yard and yelled to his soldiers to bring the little man back to him. These bandits ran to pop explosive, but he obviously wasn't there. It made them think he had escaped through the window. Mr. Murphy just stood there and didn't move, but nothing was happening. He realized that Puppy managed to disarm the bomb. The whole squad jumped into the truck and headed to Africa. Mole was enraged. He ordered to get the helicopter ready. The man wanted to bring his sketch back personally, so he took his best fighters and the helicopter quickly gained altitude. A truck with Robux drove up to a poor African hospital. Alina, we have arrived! Shoigu emptied the truck full of Robux straight to the ground. Happy children looked out from the windows of the hospital. Doctors went out too to see the marvel. But their fleeting joy was interrupted by the noise of the helicopter. It was mole. As soon as the helicopter landed, the gangsters ran towards the hospital. Mole declared that it was his money. The teacher tried to stop them but was immediately knocked out by being hit by a gun. The frightened children began to cry. The doctors scattered in fear. Maul wanted to deal with the kids, but a tranquilizer dart hit him right in the forehead. Cheech and Moses put all the bandits to sleep. It turned out that Puppik didn't escape from Maul's base. He simply hid in his office overheard his conversations. And as soon as the gangsters flew to Africa, this kid contacted Cheech and told him all the information. Thus, they had time to set up an ambush at the hospital's roof. Police officers drove up to the crime scene. All the sleeping bandits were loaded in their truck. The doctor said that the teacher was in critical condition. They put him in an air ambulance and brought him to the FBI's special hospital. It's been one year since Mr. Murphy died, so go to his grave. On that day, Shoigu didn't give his kids no, any no, homework no, 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 so that they could go to the cemetery. <laughs> Mr. Murphy, we will never forget you. A tinted minivan was parked just near the cemetery. The teacher was observing his students. Well, they miss me. Mr. Murphy, here's your new mission. 